now that I'm a mum and, um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time on the road with David, it's still important that I look at what I can do. So for, for myself, it's when I wake up in the morning, it's a cold shower. And, and for how I long, it's, Candace, how oh, long do you run it for? Yeah, I would at least a minute. Um, wow. I don't know. Yeah, for, yeah. And it I is, can it, do thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, but it is funny how you do get used to it. Your body does adjust, and sometimes it is mind over matter. Um, you know, you turn it on, you go. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to go straight in. So um, for me, it is a cold shower for a minute, and then I do. I don't put it back to hot, but I do put it back to warm. So for me, that's how I start my day. Uh, it rejuvenates me and I feel so much better for it. What about sleep, Candice? I mean, three kids under seven is tough. Travelling around, well, we haven't travelled for a while, but once you do, yep. it's tough. Mm. But as an athlete, I'm sure you more than anyone else understand the importance of sleep and what exactly is the science of sleep. So how do you manage that? For me, uh, sleep's always been the best form of recovery. So you can get massages, you can get, um, you can be, you know, you have your proteins and everything. But for me, genuine um, deep sleep when you're in your deepest moment of sleep is the best form of recovery. So um, it is hard with kids, but I run a, a very tight ship here. My kids are in bed at 7.30 at night. Hopefully they're asleep by 8. And um, unless there's a cricket match on TV, my husband's overseas, I would generally try to go to sleep at about 9, 9.30 and then up at 6 a.m. And for me, sleep is um, by far the most important thing in my daily routine. One of the things that I find uh, extraordinary about your story is that, you know, you were so fiercely competitive from a young age, which is quite inspirational. I'm sure your daughters are going to really benefit from but, seeing, you know, two parents yes. who, who really modelled that for them. And... Um, and, you know, you've weathered a lot of storms. Have you, how have you managed the stress of the worst times of your life? Because that is the most aging thing that we can go through. Cortisol breakdown is by far the worst inflammatory response that a body can have. And it's hard to recover from and it's hard to manage. Did you take any biohacking steps? Did you take any supplements? Did you change your food or exercise routine when you were training or when you were going through a personal crisis? What What do you do? Because you're smarter than most of us in this field. <laughs> well, yeah, we have been through a lot and um, we always seem to come out the other side. So for me, it's whenever I've been extremely in a stressful uh, situation for a period of time I do drop a lot of body weight and it doesn't matter what I eat it just keeps dropping off so it's important that um, I eat frequently and I'm having stuff rich in high in protein carbohydrates to keep my energy levels up because I, I see it as um, your, your proteins and carbs this way so your carbohydrates is like a boat and your protein sits on top of that and Without that carbohydrates in that boat, it's your, your protein's not going to, to move for help you move forward. So you need to have that balance of protein and carbohydrates. So I, was, I make sure that I get plenty of that. Um, but me, it's about mindset and, and it's about how you're going to approach certain things. And um, I always, like I said just previously, go for a run. I make sure that I leave my phone at home. I do my best thinking when I'm when I'm running, when I'm outdoors, when I'm walking, because it's just me and my thoughts and there's no interruptions. I get pure clarity. So being outside, going for a run, exercising um, for me is, is the best way to approach stressful situations. But I truly believe, and of course sleep, but I truly believe it's your mindset and how you look for any situation, look at any situation. I'm always the glass is half full. And I, I truly believe that if you tell yourself something, um, you can achieve anything. In, do you do um, any lasers or have you had any filler or any of the more advanced um, yeah. rejuvenation techniques? Because I, I, for sun damage, there's nothing like laser. and Yeah. So I have done, um, yeah, I've done the thermage. I've also done... So the march um, for lifting and firming. For lifting and thir uh, firming, yes. And I've also done a, a laser on my face, which was so painful. 
Uh, I'm trying to think what it was called now. Um, you had the full face one, yeah. Maybe Fraxel. Yes, the full face. Fraxel, that's what I got. I got the Fraxel. I've done that twice um, and it is extremely painful, um, but it works for me um, because I do have a lot of pigmentation. I have spent a lot of time in the sun from a very young age with my training and competing, so I had a lot of freckles. Um, I do find it a painful treatment, but, um, you know, once it all sort of scabs up after a few days and comes off, the results are amazing. So for me... Uh, it was trying to just reverse the sun damage that I had had from a young age. So now um, I'm very regimented with my my skin. So morning and night, I, 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 I have a routine. So morning, I wake up, I cleanse my face. I have a shower, I cleanse my face. Um, now, this is not a sponsored, but I just want to show everyone what I do. So I then put on... Um, the Skin Better Science Even Toning. So I put this on and that's just, um, I put that on morning and night. I love but their peel pads. That brand has the yes. best peel pads. Amazing. Um, and then I in the morning the after that, I'm all about the vitamin C. Love the vitamin C. What brand Society. is that? That's um, Society. Yep. Vitamin yeah. C. Yes. So these, this is not sponsored, but I just want to show you what works best for my skin. Um, followed by some moisturizer from Scott and Sullivan. I go to the clinic at Bondi for um, all my treatments. They know my skin really well. They're beautiful. And then I just, Kay and Lisa, and such just, good girls. They're so great. And then I am all about the SPF. So again, I just use a good um, SPF 50, um, which is the Aspect Sun. Um, you know, I, I put one of these on my, my kids' school bags. My husband has one on his cricket kit. Um, again, none of this is sponsored, but it's just what I do. And I keep it as simple as that. Um, I, if I'm doing something where I may be, my skin's not looking great. I might may use the aspect a 30 plus it's got a bit of a, um, it's not foundation, but it has got a little bit of a, um, you know, a tone in it. So yeah, that's basically what I do morning and night, uh, nighttime. I won't use the vitamin C, but I still do that same routine where I cleanse, um, you know, every second or third night I'll exfoliate. Then I put my, um, that even tone just to help with my pigmentation followed by moisturizer and eye cream. I keep it simple. Um, I don't like to clog my skin up. And um, yeah, I think that works best for me. I just want to circle back to the ageless conversation we were having in the context of the sporting world. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of all the careers in the world, probably the most brutal in terms of, uh, aging is sport um, yes. and there's there's really um, a finite time I guess in most uh, sports that uh, an athlete can be at the top of their field mm -hmm. do you think that there needs to be more work done in transitioning elite athletes in particular from being at the top of their game in their 20s and then finding a meaning and a place for themselves and their uh, their future outside of that often at a time where most people haven't even begun their lives yeah I, I think so I think it's um something that needs to be addressed more often you you just have to look at the newspaper or look at um a lot of people so a lot of um former athletes are really starting to open up about their struggles after you know being at the the highs of their sport and at the pinnacle of their sport and then the next day, no one not caring about them because they've either retired. So, um, you know, a lot of former athletes turn to drugs. They end up um, out of work. They, they're just very lost. So I think there needs to be that transitioning that happens well before they're even thinking about retiring, whether that be getting them, um, you know, some, some skills. Because, again, a lot of these athletes don't even have life skills. They turn professional at a super young age and everything's done for them. You know, at this on Tuesday, you've got to be here at 8.30 and then you're going to get physio at this. So their whole days are mapped out. They don't even have to think. Yes. So they don't even really have um, a lot of life skills or life experiences. So um, I don't know what the answer is, but I definitely feel there needs to be um, a greater focus on retirement. And I know Cricket Australia do it really well. They have a, a system in place that, you know, someone is guiding them and talking to them for quite a number of years post-retirement, um, whether it be helping them, getting them into a job, whether it be just mentally, are you okay? Do you need to speak to someone? So 
Um, because I'm in the Cricket Australia sanctum, I understand that they do have things set up. Um, but I feel like a lot of other professions in sport, they need to sort of start looking at that because uh, it is quite sad to see people who, um, you know, when they're at the top of their game, they're, you know, they're role models, they're heroes, they're idols of so many That's exactly younger right. people. And then all of a sudden they're out of work, they're out of job, they don't know where to turn to, they don't know where to get those highs of, um, you know, their sporting wins from. So there needs to be a greater focus uh, definitely on post, post-retirement. And when did you find your purpose after sport? You know, when and how did you find your game plan for an ageless, you know, forever? Mm. For me, it was um, meeting David. We, I, I met him when I was around 26 and I was starting to get to the point in my career thinking, at what point do you retire? At what point do you say enough's enough? Um, it, it's one of those hard things. Do you keep going when you're doing so well? Um, do you retire then or do you retire when you lose your form and people are saying you probably should, um, you know, give it up so for me it was meeting David and um, I fell pregnant so that was another reason why but I was starting to my focus was starting to switch to his career rather than mine and I could see the positive impact I was having on him and how that was affecting his playing career and how that was getting him to the next level and the next level. And what do and you say, what do you mean by positive impact you had on him? I love that. So he was, I guess, slightly lazy. He was mm. always had a lot of natural ability. Only the wife did, of the former captain. Yeah. Captain, he was kind of lazy. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, he, well, he was, you know, he wasn't, he was just happy with having that natural ability, but didn't want to work harder at what he was doing. So, I think when he started to see me working really hard, waking up at 4.30 and doing all these extras, he thought, wow, I, I just do what I have to do. I, I don't do the extras. I actually, I don't sacrifice as much as I probably should. And by him seeing what I was doing, his whole mind shifted. And so he would start waking up early and doing extra training. And because of that, he, he started to go century after century and was starting to play a lot more consistently and when I could see that and that I was played some role in, in, in his career and his success, it started to really um, make me think, okay, if I'm having such a, a positive impact on his life and this is what I'm doing, then I don't need to compete anymore. I feel I, I'm happy with what I've achieved. I can leave that behind. I'm, I'm helping someone else achieve their goals and, and being part of his team and, and his success was enough. 